Namaste dear friends and welcome once again. This month we will be celebrating Women's Day. But if you honestly ask me, women don't just need one day, one week, one month, one year. We need a lifetime of celebration because we are Shakti. We are the Sabala, not the Abala that we have been made to believe. After all, we have two X chromosomes. And we stand together as a collective, which is womanhood. So I join hands with you and you join hands with me. And together we are an unstoppable force. Don't you agree? And continuing what we have started last month, we will be bringing to you books by women. Women who have inspired me. Women who have resonated with me. And yes, today I'm going to read to you passages from this book, Women's Bodies, Women's Wisdom. Yes, it's a beautiful book written by a gynecologist and obstetrician, Christiana Nathra. She is an MD and she so resonates with me. Let's see what she has to say to us. We have been told that we are highly, highly emotional beings, haven't we? Well, let's see what she has to say. The purpose of emotions, regardless of what they are, is to help us identify and move towards the fulfillment of our needs, dreams, goals and desires. When our needs for rest, touch, acceptance and recognition to name just a few are satisfied, we feel good and we thrive. When we feel left out, frightened or angry on the other hand, we can be sure that we have a need we haven't identified, let alone figured out or satisfied. To become aware of our inner guidance system, we must first learn Trust our feelings, not underrate them and say, oh, you know what? We are so emotional. We are emotional because we are strong. This isn't always so easy because many of us have been taught to live our lives as though we were in a constant emergency situation. We think, oh, I'll deal with that painful emotion later. Right now, I don't have time. I have to get that report out or cook dinner or whatever it is or put the children to bed or get them from school. Whatever it is, we push our emotions under the carpet. This delay or denial requires our body to speak louder and louder to get our attention. The next time you feel moved to tears or moved to laughter, stop and experience it. It doesn't take that long and it improves the quality of life enormously. Many women have been taught to think, not feel. That we should be upbeat and happy all the time. An, an approach that inevitably results in quenching our needs. Sadness and pain are a natural part of life. They are also great teachers. No one gets through life without experiencing sadness or pain. Yet, our culture teaches us that there is something wrong with pain. That it must be drugged. Panadols, menstrual panadols, denied or otherwise avoided at all cost. And the costs are very high. We are not taught that we have an innate ability to deal with pain, that our bodies know how to do this. Crying is one way in which we rid our body of toxins. Did you know that? Crying allows us to move energy around our body and sometimes to re-channelize it or understand it in a different way. So my dear women, my dear Sakis, my dear friends, if you feel like crying, go ahead and cry. Crying doesn't mean you're weak. 
in fact crying means you are strong and stay strong because strength doesn't lie in hiding our feelings strength lies in being vulnerable vulnerable to ourselves and vulnerable to each other after all we are women aren't we there are many such beautiful things written in this book i wish i could read so many things to you but right now i'm just going to leave you with this thought that pain and pleasure are both important and give yourself the concession to feel to cry to spend a little time on tears this book was gifted to me by vandana agarwal a dear friend a dear well wisher thank you vandana i'll always thank you for this book and if you want me to read more do let me know otherwise next week we will meet you with another book from another powerful women stay with us throughout our journey thank you love you all